day Who will you serve For me and my house We will serve the Lord Choose this day Choose this day Who will you serve For me and my house We will serve the Lord Choose this day Choose this day Who will you serve for me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose His day, choose His day. Who will you serve? For me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose His day, choose His day. Who will you serve? For me and my house. We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We will serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve me and my house? We will serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve? For me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve? For me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve? For me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. We may be served for me and my house. We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. We may be served for me and my house. We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will be served? For me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve? For me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve? For me and my house, we we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We will serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We will serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my house? We we serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Who will you serve for me and my own? Who we serve the Lord. Choose this day, 
Susie's in. Who will you sum? For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose this day whom will you serve. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Have you made your choice? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are welcome to our Miracles Radio and TV Ministries of the Jesus Christ Global Mission, reaching you all the way from Langham, Maryland. This is Archbishop Stephen John Biokro coming your way with the living word of God. Choose this day who will you serve. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. What's your decision? For this year, as we have moved in in 2018, everyone is happy and um, uh, celebrating our arrival into 2018. As you make your bed, so you lie on it. It's a time of prayer, the whole of January, a time of meditating on the Word of God, and uh, committing the whole year to God and asking God for favor, grace, and mercy. I personally want to call this year a year of abundance and plenty, a year of overflowing glory and anointing of God. Yes, uh, I don't like talking about the devil. I got no business with the devil. I'm talking about Jesus, talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about God, the Creator who made everything good, who sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. That's what we're talking about. We have no business with Satan and all his demons. We have business with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh yes, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not expecting doom. I'm expecting God's glory. I'm expecting God's favor. I'm expecting God's grace and mercy. Yes, the same way too. I want you to feel that way. Expect a miracle. Someone wrote on his desk, expect a miracle from God. God is a good God. Yeah, there's no bad in him. The devil is a bad devil. We are hooked up with God. And so we are expecting a prosperous 2018, a glorious 2018. Yes, a breakthrough 2018, a year of plenty and abundance. Yes, in the name of Jesus, so shall it be according to your faith, be it unto you. Yes, we're going to be talking about, Lord, what will thou have me do? That's the topic of today. It's a question. Lord, what will thou have me do? And our test is taken from Acts of Apostles, chapter 9. Verse 6, Acts of Apostles, chapter 9, verse 6, um, if you read from verse 1, it's an experience. The Apostle Paul had a visitation on his way to Damascus. He was going down there to kill Christians, to persecute Christians, terrifying Christians. In Acts chapter 8, he gathered people to kill Stephen, they persecuted Stephen and stoned him to death. And now in Acts of Apostles chapter 9, the Apostle Paul, then he was called Saul of Tarsus before this experience. He gathered people together and got letters uh, from the authorities. He was going to Damascus to persecute Christians, terrorizing Christians, just like a terrorist. And on his way, he had a divine encounter. He had a divine visitation from his creator, God Almighty, and that changed his life forever. Acts of Apostles chapter 9, verses 1 to 10. In fact, you can make it up to verse 15. God visited him and that transformed his life forever. He asked the question, Lord, what will thou have me do? Acts of Apostles chapter 9, verse 6. In verse 6, the Apostle Paul, he asked a powerful question. Lord, what will thou have me do? And I want you to underline that question because that is our topic. That's our theme. It is a very powerful prayer. Lord, what will thou have me do? 
which means up to this point, Paul of Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus, didn't know what God wanted him to do. And because he didn't know what God wanted him to do, the devil gave him a job. <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> John 10.10, 10. the devil came to steal, to kill, to destroy, but Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. When people don't know what God wants them to do, the devil is going to occupy them. There is no vacancy in the realm of the spirit. There is no vacuum in the realm of the spirit. You are either filled with the spirit of God or the devil is in the air. Saul of Taxus later became Paul. He didn't know what to do at his junction. He was confused. So what was he doing before now? He was killing Christians. Now, this is what happens when people don't know what God wants them to do. When people don't know what God wants them to do, they, they, they are open to the devil and the devil occupies them. The idle hand is the devil's workshop. The idle person is the devil's workshop. My prayer for you this day, 2018, is that the Holy Spirit will occupy you, Jesus will occupy you, God will occupy you, you will not do the devil's work, the devil came to steal, to kill, to destroy, Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly, you will do what God wants you to do, in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a powerful question. Acts of Apostles chapter 9, verse 6. Lord, what will thou have me do? I wish every Christian in this world will pray this prayer. And even non-believers, even non-Christians, they should pray this prayer. Lord, what will thou have me do? Because it's very dangerous if you don't know what God wants you to do. If you don't know what God wants you to do, you will behave like Saul of Taxus, moving around, going there, you know, destroying lives and property, you know, leading people to go and riot and fight and destroy and kill and suicide bombing and halothism and prostitution and all the evil things will occupy your heart because Jesus is not there. The Holy Spirit is not there. Now the devil has occupied the person. I pray for you today, hearing this word of God, that Jesus will occupy you, heaven will occupy you, God will occupy you, the Holy Spirit will occupy you, the demons will not occupy you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you meet with destiny today, because that was what happened in Acts chapter 9. He met with destiny, he met with destiny. He met with destiny and that changed him forever. May that happen to you today. Jacob had a similar experience. In Genesis 32, verse 22 to 31. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 to 31. Jacob had a similar experience. The Bible says he was alone. And an angel came down and wrestled with him. The angel came down and wrestled with him throughout the night. And uh, he had a visitation too. And uh, God changed his name. Your name is no longer Jacob. The supplanter, you are now Israel because you wrestle with God and you won. His name was changed, his old nature of cheating people and stealing, stealing people's birthright. That nature was broken by this encounter. The angel wrestled with him. Genesis 32, verse 22 to 31. The angel wrestled with Jacob. And Jacob prevailed. He was not defeated. And that changed his life. The angel, you know, ministered to him. And told him, your name is no longer Jacob the supplanter, Jacob the Wyoris, Jacob the 419, Jacob the thief. You stole your brother's bed, right? Your name is no longer Jacob the Wyoris. Just as you continue to hook up with these broadcasts every week, your life will never be the same again because you are experiencing divine encounter 
through this broadcast. The Apostle Peter had a similar experience in Luke chapter 5, verse 6. Apostle Peter, he was a feature man. In Luke chapter 5, verse 6, Peter had an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ when Jesus met him with his boat fishing. He was so frustrated and disappointed and Jesus entered his boat and because Jesus was there, he was able to catch fishes. And Jesus made a powerful statement. He said, Peter, hmm, as from now on, you are a fisher of men. You are no longer Simon. Simon means reed. It's a little uh, leaf uh, that is uh, blown about by winds, being tossed about, symbolizing uh, unsteadiness, unstable. So that's the meaning of Simon. But the day he met Jesus Christ, Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter. Peter means Sepha, the, the rock. You are no longer Simon, you are now Peter, the rock. And of course, that kind of thing should happen to everyone. You should have a definite experience in your life that turns you around. A man of God said, turning point. Say so there is a turning point. Something that happens in your life and there is a total turn around. If any man be in Christ, if any woman be in Christ, it's a new creature, all things must pass away. The old life must pass away. The old way, the old fornication and adultery, the old stealing and lying, the old selfishness and greed, the old prostitution, all things must pass away. Behold, all things must become new. Peter, you are no longer Simon. You are now a fisher of men. As from today, you are going to fish men for, for kingdom of God. Prophet Isaiah had the same experience in Isaiah chapter 6. The book of Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 10. The prophet Isaiah have always been a prophet all the way from Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. He has been a prophet all these years, working with King Uzziah. But in Isaiah chapter 6, something definite happened in the life of prophet Isaiah. The scripture then says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Prophet Elisha saw the law. Every King Uzziah that is hindering you from seeing God, this year God has pushed them away in Jesus' name. And you will have a definite experience with God Almighty. You have a definite visitation from heaven. You have a definite encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Prophet Isaiah was in the temple having some time with God, having some time of quietness. Sometimes we should have some moments of quietness. Sometimes we are so noisy, we are so busy, we, we can't encounter spiritual things. Sometimes you need to separate yourself, be somewhere, just be maybe somewhere in your room, maybe somewhere in a quiet corner in your home. Maybe somewhere in a quiet place in your office or uh, a quiet corner somewhere. And you are there alone with God. Alone with God. A man of God wrote a book. He called it Alone with God. Have you ever been alone with God? That is when you get experiences. That is when God ministers to you. That is when God talks. As long as you are very busy. You are very busy running around, jumping around. You are very busy. God is not ready for you yet. Read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The man who wrote the book of Revelation, John, he was in the island of Patmos on the Lord's day, separated from everybody. When God appeared to him and gave him the book of Revelation to write, may you receive revelation. 
In the name of Jesus, may God give you true revelation that will bring your breakthrough this year, 2018. In the name of Jesus, may he open your eyes that you might behold wondrous things out of his law. May he open your eyes that you might see God. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. He is high and lifted up, and his glory filled the temple. He is high lifted up, and his praise filled the temple. The angels cry, Holy. The angels cry, Holy. The angels cry, Holy to the Lord. I see the Lord. I see the Lord is highly lifted up, and his glory feed the temple. He is high and lifted up, and his praise feed the temple. The angels cry, holy. The angels cry, holy. The angels cry, holy to the Lord. Hallelujah. The year that King Uzziah died was the year Prophet Isaiah saw the Lord. May you see the Lord this year, 2018. May God reveal himself to you. May God visit you mightily. May you have a divine encounter with the Holy Spirit. May Jesus visit you mightily this year in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 10. Isaiah saw the Lord. And the Lord ministered to him and commissioned him. Who will I send? Who will go for me? But Isaiah said, Lord, I will go. It is me. Send me, Lord. I will go. He surrendered himself. And the Lord sanctified his lips and touched him with the coals of fire. And he was ready to fulfill the commission. Divine encounter. May you have divine encounter with your creator. May you meet God. Dr. T.L. Osborne, he used to say this before he went to glory. Reverend Dr. T.L. Osborne, he said, when you meet the Lord Jesus Christ, you will never be the same again. When you have a divine encounter, a divine visitation from God, you will never be the same person again. Oh, yes, it is true. Had son of Tarsus met a preacher on his way to Damascus, he probably would not have been transformed. But guess what? Saul of Taxus, he had divine encounter, divine visitation with the Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus. And that changed the story. No more uh, Saul the terrorist. Now Apostle Paul, his name was changed from Saul. Saul used to be a terrorist, killing Christians and open churches, and establish churches and pastors all over. May that be your story in the name of Jesus. May God turn you around. May he visit you. May this be that year in which we have divine encounter. May this year, 2018, be the year of your life. May this be the year of supernatural divine visitation from heaven. Divine encounter from your creator God. Yes, may this be the best day of your life. In the name of Jesus, may heaven be upon. May God show himself to you. And may he change your life and turn you around from being a con man to be a preacher of the gospel, from being a wayward woman to be a woman of God. May you have divine encounter with your creator today. In the name of Jesus, may you meet with destiny. In the name of Jesus, may God reveal himself to you. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Rikabasaya. Something is happening already. Hey, Rakabaya. I can feel it in the spirit. God is ministering to people out there. Jesus is revealing himself to you. The Holy Spirit is beginning to, to make a way for you where there is no way. Yes, you are breaking through. You are breaking forth. This year is your year of breaking through and breaking forth to possess your possession. This year, 2018, is your year. 
or supernatural divine breakthrough, favor, grace, and mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, Rakaba. Yandoria, Anda, Ambassa. You got to know the purpose why you are leaving. Pastor uh, Rick Warren, he wrote a book. He said, Understanding God's purpose for your living. There is a purpose for your living. And don't you rest until you discover God's purpose for your living. Saul of Taxus, he never knew God's purpose. And he was fulfilling God, he was fulfilling the devil's uh, mission until he met Jesus Christ. May you meet Jesus Christ today, understanding God's purpose for your life. First John 3, 8. Say, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3, verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He said, for this purpose, for this reason, the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. There is a purpose for living. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13, he said, The whole purpose of man on earth is to serve God and keep his commandments. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13, King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived in his day, has this to say. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13, he said, The whole duty of man, the whole purpose of man on earth, is to serve God and to obey his commandments. May that be your story in the name of Jesus. May you not do what God doesn't want you to do. May you not do something else other than what God wants you to do. May you pray the prayer of Apostle Paul. Lord, what will thou have me do? Lord, what will thou have me do? The worst thing that can happen to you is that you don't know what God wants you to do and you are doing just anything. Because when you begin to do just anything, you are going to do the wrong thing. Like Saul of Tarsus, see now, he said he, say he did not know what to do, what God wanted to do, he doesn't know. So he went around killing Christians and, uh, you know, persecuting the church and they were stoning Stephen to death in uh, chapter 8 and then he was now going to Damascus to go and destroy the churches there. That's the devil's work. John 10.10. 10. The devil came to steal, to kill, to destroy. Jesus came to give life and life more about life. Why will you do what the devil wants you to do? The devil wants you to go and thief. The devil wants you to go and tell lies. The devil wants you to go and sleep with the prostitutes. The devil wants you to go and do suicide bombing. The devil wants you to go and kill your neighbor. The devil wants you to, to go and do all the evil things and all the prostitution and the halothism. The devil wants you to go and do homosexualism. The devil wants you to go and do uh, uh, lesbian. The devil wants you to, to go and... Uh, uh, and rob people and uh, do witchcraft and do all the evil things. Beloved, that is not for you. That's the devil's work. You don't have to do what the devil wants you to do. You got to do what God wants you to do. This year, 2018, one of the prayers you must pray today, tonight, one of the prayers you must pray right now, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And God will reveal to you. The Holy Spirit will show you. Jesus will show you. God will lead you. He will guide you. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Romans 8, 14. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 14. He say, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. I prophesy to you today that throughout this year, 2018, God will lead you. Holy Spirit will lead you. Jesus will lead you to do what you are supposed to do. To do God's assignment. To fulfill God's purpose. To do the work of God. To do the will of God. To do the perfect will of God. Not everyone that said, Lord, 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 shall enter the kingdom of God. But they that do the will of the Father. There is a will of the Father. You need to yield yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
To whom ye yield yourself servants to be, his servants ye are. Romans chapter 6 verse 16. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 16. To whom ye yield yourself servants to be, his servants. If you yield yourself to the devil, the devil will be your master. And he will enter you and use you to fulfill his purpose. When you yield your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life and dwell with me and dwell in me, Jesus will enter you. The Holy Spirit will enter you. God will enter you and use you for his own purpose, divine purpose, for kingdom purpose. God did not create you to be a servant of Satan. I was born to be. God's dwelling place, a home for thy presence of thy Lord. So let my life now be separated unto you, that I may be what I was born to be. Please listen to this. I was born to be God's dwelling place, a home for the presence of the Lord. So let my life now be separated unto thee. That I may be what I was born to be. You were born to be his dwelling place. You were born to be God's dwelling place. Ye are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Say, no ye not that ye are the temples of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwells in you because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He uses you for the purpose of God. He uses you to do the things of the Lord. He uses you to do the right things. When the devil dwells in you, then the devil used you to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give life, and life more abundantly. Hey, Rakabasaya Kasanto Robosa. Henderia, the sons of Issachar, in First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, talks about the sons and daughters of Issachar. One of the tribes of Israel, he said, these people, they took time to pray and to seek the face of God and to know the mind of God and what Israel is supposed to be doing. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar, the daughters of Issachar. He said, these people called the sons of Issachar, they took time to be in the presence of God in prayers and in studying of the world that they might get a clear revelation of what God wants them to do. <laughs> May you be the son of Issachar as from today. May you be the daughter of Issachar as from today. May you be the one who will seek the mind of God. May you be the one who we pray and be in the presence of God in the house of God, that you might know the mind of God. It's a place where God meets with you and you meet with God, the house of the Lord. You must go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's where you hear the word of God and you give your life to Jesus. That is where you are pastored, you are taught, you have a guidance, you have a man of God or a woman of God over your life. Who chose with you the word of God, the house of God? Don't neglect the house of God. They that dwell in the house of the Lord shall flourish. Oh yes, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. You got to redeem the time. The times in which we are, so much is going on. The devil is doing over time, occupying people. To do all kind of stuff. People are making themselves agents of Satan. 
People allow the devil to occupy their hearts and occupy their minds and occupy their soul. And the devil is using them to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I got to tell you that when you ask the Lord to come into your heart, as many as receive Christ, to them God gave power to become the sons of God. When you open up and receive Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, the Holy Spirit will possess you. The demons will run away. Lord, what will thou have me do? God will begin to use you to preach his gospel. God will begin to use you to show the way to those in darkness. God will begin to use you to be a blessing to others. May that be your story as from today. In the name of Jesus, you will not be an agent of Satan. You will not be a disciple of the devil. You will not be somebody whom devil will use to steal, to kill, to destroy. You will be an agent of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be a child of God. You will be born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. God will use you for the purpose of which he has created you. God will minister to you and reveal to you the things he wants you to do. And as you begin to do the will of God, the blessings of God will begin to pursue you and overtake you. In the name of Jesus, you shall be an agent of the Holy Spirit. You shall be a carrier of God's glory. May God make you a carrier, a container for the anointing of God, for the purpose of God. May Jesus dwell in you richly. May the word of God dwell in you richly. May you be a doer of the word and not just a hearer alone. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you meet with destiny. May you discover God's purpose for your lives. In the name of Jesus, may you do what God wants you to do. In the name of Jesus, you will not do what the devil wants you to do. In the name of Jesus, may God highly favor you. May the grace and mercy and favor of God continue to be upon your life. In the name of Jesus, may you fulfill your destiny for God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha, Rakabaya. Andoria, Amblondo God is showing me somebody because you have agreed to do the will of God this year. God said he's going to crown your effort with successes. Because you have agreed to allow God to use you this year, God said he's going to crown you with his loving kindness and with his tender mercies and with his favor and grace. He's giving you breakthrough, open doors and open gates. Opportunities are coming your way right Right now, receive it in the name of Jesus. Hey, Rakabaya, Kando Riba Anda Amble Kende Sendia. Thank you, Jesus. Only what you did for God shall remain, everything shall pass away. Only what you did for God shall remain. You will be remembered for what you did for God. It is very important. I pray for you today that you will be a doer of this world and not just a hearer alone. In the name of Jesus, may God richly bless you abundantly. Long life and prosperity to you and your family and to everyone around you. Receive this year all that God has for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Yes, feel free to email us our miracles radio at juno.com. Our miracles radio at juno.com. Uh, also, feel free, you can reach us on the phone for prayer or counseling, area code 240-552-5899, 240-552-5899, or area code 202-460-7110, 202-460-7110. Please forward this message to as many you know all over the world, wherever they are. Share this message with them, email it to them. Test it to them, forward it to them, tweet it to them, share it.